Well, a few years ago, the consumers successfully worked with our representatives in the DOD to increase the funding for the OCRP, and that really provided a unique opportunity to expand the breadth of ovarian cancer researchers. The Ovarian Cancer Research Program established uh, an academy for uh, young investigators who were finishing their postdoctoral training and moving into uh, becoming instructors and assistant professors in academic centers. And one of the things that is always very challenging is the first five years of an independent investigator's career. So the Academy provided a significant amount of funding for these junior investigators, but it did a couple of other things. First of all, it required that these mentees co-submit a grant with the mentor. And the grant also provided money for the mentor so that the mentor you know, really understood that he or she was absolutely responsible for the success of this mentee. We try to provide guidance uh, about the scientific direction that the uh, mentee is actually pursuing to give them uh, some encouragement with respect to the presentation of their results in both abstract forms and uh, help them with their uh, publications and trying to edit those publications. Uh, and then try to give them advice as they seek out independent funding and, and generally to be a, a great cheerleader to the individual who invariably will have some setbacks and some discouragement during the entire process as research goes in, in many different areas. Currently there are seven young investigators paired with seven mentors. I've been privileged to have as mentor Dr. Stephen Canister, who is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and he is the editor-in-chief of Journal of Clinical Oncology. He has helped me both in terms of professionally, in terms of promotion, um, uh, giving me the opportunities to um, uh, think novel concepts and novel ideas, as well as form collaborations with other people. Uh, he's also been extremely helpful in terms of formulating new grants and uh, submit new grant applications. So I, I think that he, it is a great privilege to have him as a mentor. I'm very uh, pleased to be able to mentor uh, Dr. Chip Landon. He has an interest in ovarian cancer stem cells and is trying to identify that group of uh, cells that persist in patients that may ultimately develop uh, recurrent tumors and why those cells become so resistant to chemotherapy. One of the features of the Academy is to bring the young investigators together and also to bring the mentors together. And we meet monthly actually by WebEx. We, we, we present uh, interns and then we get a critic from other trainees. So by this way, we basically, um, we not only communicate our ideas, but also obviously in the process foster the collaboration. And one of the most important things is to have these investigators so comfortable with, with each other that they'll collaborate for the rest of their careers. As a consequence of this, in fact, myself and another um, a trainee, Dr. Chip Langen, actually, we are collaborating on another grant application for the DOD. So this essentially is uh, one of the examples of the success outcome of this uh, program. We also scheduled workshops uh, to bring the young investigators who were part of the academy all together to develop a small peer group along with their mentors to talk about things. Um, how do you run your laboratory? How do you, how do you put together a good scientific talk? Good slides, good eye contact, great inflection. How do you write a competitive grant award? How do you review grants? Um, what are the benchmarks for promotion? Uh, how do you successfully interact with collaborators? How do you decide to divide your time between your specific laboratory focus versus reaching out more broadly in the ovarian cancer community and also to serve as a conduit to introduce or network these young academy members with more senior members of the ovarian cancer research community. Starting a young investigator early in ovarian cancer is important and, and supporting them in this way is important because the disease so far has averted all attempts at, uh, at solving it from the clinical 
standpoint. So it's very hard to get a young investigator to say, I'm going to investigate my career in a disease that nobody else has solved before. My specific ground focus on a particular project which um, study a phenomenon so-called cellular selections, in other words, how cell age. So the, the goal of this um, research is to try to uh, figure out um, or explore, if you will, uh, whether it's a feasibility to basically, uh, instead of kill the ovarian cancer cells, push them through the aging process, therefore they cannot continue to grow. Uh, the focus of my work is understanding mechanism of platinum as well as pl uh, PARP inhibitor resistance in ovarian cancer. Some of ovarian cancer tumors are particularly sensitive to chemotherapy and this has to do with a pathway called homologous recombination pathway and understanding how certain cells become and are so sensitive to chemotherapy um, through that pathway is what I'm working on and also identifying how at some point these cells become resistant to these drugs and identify novel drugs that can counteract this uh, development of resistance. I think this investment is going to pay off big time as we see these young people mature and uh, their research uh, advance and hopefully make some promising new discoveries in ovarian cancer that we can utilize to help uh, the patients that we take care of who are affected by this disease. I believe it is served as a way of identifying what I believe will eventually be, you know, the all-stars, the sort of young professors in the ovarian cancer community, say 10 years from now.